Yeah, first drop! Oh, oh there's a sea lice in its nose. this moment for, for any other. That is not what you want. It's a little sailboat. No, I can't believe I let that happen. 6 a.m. Sun's just risen. I reckon I got a good two hours sleep, which is two hours better than last night. Welcome to another episode of Getting Back to Basics. If you're watching this for the first time, this series, this is the Blue Highway, traveling up the ocean, and I've been away from home close to a month. Started out solo, had my Mrs. Nikki join me, and then a few days ago, had one of my best mates, Greg, join me, which if you have been following along, watching each episode, you'll know that the last couple of days have been testing, to say the least, and last night he got uh, medevaced out of a remote beach that the ambulance four-wheel drive to from a remote community, so it was really intense, and he is currently stable and alive yeah in the hospital i know that he would be wanting me to have the best time possible as would i him if the uh, the tables were turned the issue is that i obviously want to get back to civilization to be able to check in with him and see that he gets better but i've got about 350 miles to travel in the next couple of days before the weather blows up really rough see how we go i do need to get food at some stage i've just got leftover rice from last night i'm going to take you guys along for the ride as you know i don't sugarcoat shit highs lows everything Everything in between and this is why i reckon you could do this stretch of coastline along the great barrier reef in australia 10 lifetimes over like have a go at that it honestly feels like a sacred spot these gorgeous rocky escarpments crystal clean water they'd probably be crocs so i'm not going to get in but that's honestly just outstanding eh? wow let's do it Gotta get home before she turns. It just sounded over a bit of fish as I'm covering some miles this morning. So I'm gonna throw a jig down there and see if we can catch something for breakfast, lunch, and or dinner. Bit of bait on the sounder, so see if anything's happening down there. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, get off the bottom, get off the bottom. Get off the bottom, mate. Oh, whacked! Oh no! Yeah! Oh, it's good fish! Ah. Oh, what? Big gold spot. Awesome fish. Ready, mate? Oh. Big, beautiful gold spot cod. Oh, there's a sea lice in its nose. I don't know if you can see that, but this is a. This is that bit big for me. They do release pretty well, so I'm gonna let this one go and then back myself to get something else. Oh. Gone. That was a good release. I've been going for four and a half hours. I've done about 75 miles. I only had a couple of quick stops to, to fish. I'm really hoping I don't regret throwing away that big gold spot cod. It was a bit too big and I really don't like any, um, they're really sensitive to food waste. I hate wasting food. So I got some leftover rice from yesterday. Don't know how long we'll go for today, just as much as the weather allows. I think it's gonna blow up a bit more this afternoon. So I'll try and find a good anchorage and then continue tomorrow. I really wish I could say I was eating some simple seafood, but it's just rice, just the simple, not the seafood. I need to make a, a better effort to get some seafood this afternoon. Leftover rice with soy sauce, I'm gonna have to do for now. On the charts, it looks like there's an island about 20 miles away, but I reckon I'll make a good anchorage and probably be able to get a feed of, of something too for dinner, so a couple of hours steam. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Been cruising along for about an hour. The wind has pretty much dropped off, which is strange. The sound has gone and lit up like a Christmas tree in 16 meters of water, so surely I can snag a fish. Oh, yep. Oh, oh, good fish. Get off the bottom. Oh, oh geez. Oh. First drop! What is that? Fire, oh, it's like the definition of bent over the gunnels. Give it up a bit of the fight. Oh, one of the hardest fighting fish in the entire ocean. Ah, oh, big Chinaman. All right, mate. Oy. They're an impressive looking fish. 
Hopefully he's not too buggered and I can swim him back in. Chinaman, you're allowed to take him, catch him and eat him in Western Australia, but not in, in this state, in Queensland. I'll get him back in the water. Oh. Yeah! Oh. What is that? Oh, please don't be a shark. The rock comes up to about 11 meters, covered in baits. I thought I'd just have a bit of a run over with the lures. In the way of a troll, second run, this has been smoked. Oh, there's a bit of weight to it, I just really hope it's not a shark. Oh, not again. I'm bent over the gunnels. What are you? <laughs> of course, of course it's a big G. Oh, not massive, but nice GT. Too big to eat. You're only just hooked. You know what, mate? I'll get you off in the water. Easy, mate. Gone. Nice GT. Love them more on top water, but always good to see a nice big healthy GT. It's too big to eat though. I've been traveling for close to seven hours today from about six this morning. And I think this is gonna do me for the day. The wind's come up a little bit on the other side of this island. Nice anchorage, sandy. I can't get into the island yet though. The tide's too low. When it starts building, I'll go in, but with a, a total of about, I reckon four hours sleep in the last two nights, I'm feeling a bit like delirious and like dull on senses and just like a bit slow reaction time, which is not great for trudging through mangroves over there where there's crocs and trying to get a feed of crabs and whatever else so but yeah i'm gonna refuel the boat do a bit of boat admin and have a little bit of a siesta oh, for the next half hour or so it's meant to lay my head down for 30 40 minutes two and a half hours later i emerge ah let's go check this island out thinking check up behind these mangroves and that section over there I've found is sandflies. Only sandflies. What I'm hoping I find and what I'm looking for is really big holes where mud crabs call home, where they live. Really big tree or mangrove logs, stumps, where they might be sitting under. Or occasionally you'll luck out and you'll find the mud crabs just sort of sitting on the surface or semi-submerged on the surface, but so far no luck. We'll keep persisting. This is hard rock up against the corally mud. That is perfect. Oh, and I dare say there's a big crab in there. Oh, how are we gonna get that out? I'll find a stick. So this hole, I just put a stick up here and it runs all the way back there. So there's just close to no chance. I can't even get my arm up under there. No chance of getting it out. Huh. Don't expect to see that in here. Another Nautilus shell, which is awesome, but I can't eat it, so, so not that awesome. There was no luck on the mud crabs in that section. Pretty epic island though at this high point. Later on, once I get some water, I'll try and find a little goat track up to the top, see if we can get a view. There's one more section of mangrove up here that looks a bit likely, so I'll, I'll pop my head in there and see if we can wrangle one before we lose that sun. I've had some really great triumphs this trip in the mangroves, but this afternoon I just couldn't convert to mud crab. No mud crab. I quickly checked up on this anchor and it had been dragging because it's all coral here. It's an easy way to lose your boat and have to swim after it in the middle of croc country, which would be really, really suboptimal. But I've opted to go for a up to this mountain because I figure I should be getting something to eat, but I'm going to eat again and I can last. With, I'll be okay just having rice for dinner. But I probably won't be here again, so I want to make the, the absolute most of this. All right, I'm going to get up there somehow. The rocks hiking up is starting to get a bit slippery and considering not one person knows I'm here on this island and I'm obviously by myself, I'll stick here. Pretty, pretty good view though. Just been sitting here for the last half an hour, taking in this view and just reflecting on the last close to a month out here. 
And yeah, it's sort of like times like these where it's really peaceful and you just feel this immense feeling of gratitude. You really do. How fortunate we are that there are places like this in the world that you can come and explore and camp and adventure. And for my health that I'm able to, to do it. So wouldn't trade this moment for, for any other. It's been a really good, really good moment sitting up here and taking it in. But right now I need to, before it gets dark, get back to the boat and find a, a half decent anchorage and perhaps a final effort to get a fish for dinner. <laughs> I shouldn't have let that bloody gold spot go, but anyway, that's in the past. There's obviously a fruit bat colony living in here. Hope you can hear that, it's just so loud and just smells so, so strong of fruit bat. Ah! Oh, choo choo. Oh no. That can only be one thing. Shark. Oh geez, we've stirred the bats. Oh. Oh. I don't want to eat shark for dinner. Oh, it's a decent shark. Black tip reef shark. Come here, bitey. You're too big for dinner, but I want my lure back. Oh, no. Come on, man. I just want to get this lure out of your mouth hole. <sighs> Come here, you little cheeky devil. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. <sighs> Oh well, if I wasn't really hungry for a feed of fish, that would have been real fun. I'm gonna have to anchor this boat. It's my final effort to catch something for dinner. A squid light. I reckon we got a 50-50 chance though. There's fish down there, but no squid. So, rice for dinner. All right, time to get some sleep. 5.30 in the morning. I reckon I would've got maybe six hours last night sleep, which is amazing, which is so good. Let's get into it. We've got a long way to go today. I've got a couple of hundred miles. Looks like there's a bit of wind around though, so it's gonna be a big day. And I'm having to tack a lot this morning, which is basically like, I wanna go one way, but it's too rough to go straight into the, the wind of the waves. So I'm needing to, to go on a more favorable angle and then cut back up across the, along the coast. So yeah, take a little bit longer than anticipated, but at least I'm not getting thrown around more than I already am. What is that? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. No. It cut me on the prop. Trolling first up in the morning, trying to get a feed. Big cobia. I can't believe I let that happen. <sighs> yeah, I just I don't have a good gaff and I couldn't lift it into the boat. That was a heavy fish. That was like an 18 kilo cobia. Oh, that's tough going. I've been going for about two and a half hours now. So I'm gonna stretch the legs. Oh, stretch the legs in this little bay. Looks like it's catching a lot of rubbish, so pretty good for a beach comb. This way. Why do I always end up in the mangroves? <sighs> this beach behind me here is probably one of the cleanest I've seen in the way of rubbish wise. It's spectacular, it's gorgeous, especially from a distance. And then you come in and even still, there's plastic, rubber, steel, so much rubbish lined along the beach. It's always a good firm reminder for me to recycle where I can, to use less, and to put pressure on the ones who, who are at the top making the policies and whatnot. And the reality is that it's either on high tides getting moved around to other beaches or just buried in sand. There's just layers and layers of rubbish under this sand in front of me, such as light bulb, basket, 10,000 million trillion plastic bottles, front of surfboard that has been attacked by a big shark, tiny baby child's thongs. No fish, but... Esky from boat. I could just keep going on. There's just so much stuff. Oh, and every now and then, find treasure. That's a win. Keep moving. That is not what you want. It's a little sailboat. Oh, it looks a really nice timber sailboat, half buried in this sand. The 
sad reality is that all this rubbish has become a, a permanent fixture of the landscape. I don't think that'll ever change. It's just sort of the reality that plastic and, and all this sort of ocean rubbish is now everywhere. Wherever the tide and the wind goes, it'll go with it. What I've done on this trip though is I've taken the coordinates, logged down in a diary, all of the locations that are look like rubbish dumps like this one here where literally for a couple of miles of this beach on the high tide line it's just packed full of plastic and metal and rubber and rope and floats and just all different sorts of shit and i'm going to give that to parlay a beach ocean cleanup mob here in australia i understand it's a band-aid fix but it's better than nothing get out of the ocean you bastard I've got about four or five hours to go, quite a long steam, and it's, other than this gorgeous coastline beside me, pretty uneventful. So I'm gonna put the cameras away and just get it going. So I'm back home, back home on the farm, safe and sound. This is the final episode of the Blue Highway. If you've made it through all the episodes, let us know in the comments what you thought your, your favorite was. I'd also be really curious to know how long you've spent by yourself. Uh, this trip for me was the longest I'd ever spent by myself. Yeah, I'd be really curious to know because before this, for me, it was like one or two days I'd ever spent by myself, no comms with anyone else. So please let me know if it's the first time that you've watched this episode or Back to Basics. There's lots of other series and you can go back 12 episodes five weeks ago when I left on this journey and watch all the other the other episodes of the highs and the lows and uh, everything in between, all the different experiences I had. It was just a phenomenal time. I'm very grateful to have had it, experienced it and to be home safe and sound. I'm on this 42 acre farm that we've got. It's called The Pocket in Alarish in North Queensland. We've got a farm cafe there on the Bruce Highway. So if you are in the area, please check it out. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And also if you wanna watch some videos of what we're doing to be more self-sufficient on the land, you can jump over to Back to Basics Homesteading or B2B Homesteading on YouTube. I've just put a few videos up. If you'd like to check that out, please do. We're building out a tropical fruit orchard and trying to be as self-sufficient as we can on the land. Appreciate it, everyone. Stay safe, tell your mates you love them. Keep going out there. We'll see you next time.